Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if there's one thing in the world that I love, it's Belgian beer. If there's another thing I love, it's when game companies release source code to their games, especially new games, and that's exactly what just happened here. Delver is an open source indie game that just had its source code released. Now don't think that this means the game out there is completely free, but the engine and tools are all available under an open source license. Now before we jump in, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and download and use the source code, but I need to warn you right up front, it's in Java. Now, I know that's going to turn a few people off, but you really shouldn't let it do that. Use this as an opportunity to get, expose yourself to another programming language if you haven't already done so. And you can always glean something, techniques, skills, traits, whatever, even if you're not familiar or fluent in the language in question. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in, take a quick look at what Delver is. Then we're going to look at what you need to get up and running with the source code. Now, Delver is available at delvergame.com. Of course, I will toss all of these links uh, down below, so don't worry about any of that. Uh, here's the description. Delver is a first-person action roguelike in development for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android devices, and it is now available on Steam. If you are interested, you can go ahead and watch the trailer there. You can see it's kind of a, a mashup of, I don't know, Spelunky, Minecraft, and Ultima Underworld, if I had to describe it. Now, I don't actually have a lot of exposure or experience with this game, but if you jump over to Steam, you will see the all reviews is very positive with 1,735 of them. So this is by all standards, a successful indie title. And I believe it's been under development for a number of years. Now, the cool thing about them releasing the source code is I'd like to see these developers get supported. So if you haven't checked out this game, maybe contenders consider doing so. You can see you can buy it for $17.50 Canadian, so probably $14 or $13 US. And the source code. All right, now over to that. Now, the source code itself is available up on GitHub. What we're going to need to do is go ahead and clone the repository. So come here and grab this guy. If you are interested, the source code down below is under the GPL v2 license. If you're unfamiliar with your open source licenses, this one kind of is all about keeping the source open. So there are some limitations attached to GPLv2. Do be sure to check those out. So basically, once you started using source code from a GPL project, you need to keep the source code open and freely available. So do be aware there are a lot of caveats with the GPL license. But this is, again, an opportunity to just look at how somebody created their game, if nothing else. Um, now, what you will find, the warning once again here is the source does not contain or cover the game data from Delver. So if you actually want to play the game, you need to purchase the game. Uh, the game does, however, come with an IntelliJ project to get you up and running quickly. Now, if you've never set up a Java development environment, you're going to need to download a Java JDK. Now, getting into the world of Java development can be fun. <laughs> um, what I generally find is being incredibly outdated on your JDKs is the best way to go. Now, people will like spin in their grave for hearing me say that. But what I'm going to demonstrate today is I think running on JDK 8, not 11. Now, when I tried to run on 11, I ran into all kinds of headaches. And that is just the way things work in Java. Every time you move up to any Java version, you almost always have some kind of a pain in the butt headache. And the majority of the world was stuck using an older version of Java. I don't know if the Java ecosystem has gotten any better. All I'm saying is today, I am going to be showing you this on JDK 8. You can try 11 and good luck for you. But the key thing here is you do need to have a version of the JDK installed. Um, this is the one I'm using. Java SE 8. Um, so you can go ahead and download it right there. Um, do make sure that if you're on 64-bit, you grab the 64-bit version. And I find as a general rule of thumb, you probably don't want to have the 32 and 64-bit side by side because it just creates headaches. And then finally, you're going to want the IntelliJ IDE. Now, you don't need to use IntelliJ, but it is a great and free IDE. And that is what Delver was pre-configured to use. So if you want to get up with the least amount of effort possible, use IntelliJ. Uh, the community version is available right here. Now, one thing you may have noticed or you may have used in the past is Android Studio. Android Studio is a fork version of IntelliJ. So if you're familiar with one, you should be fine with the other. All right. So now that we have our repository copies, remember right back here and make sure that you have Git on your machine. If you don't already, you need to have Git in this day and age anyways. Uh, what you want to do is clone this repository. So let's just fire up a command prompt, go to the directory you want to install it to, and then do a Git clone and then paste that URL. You'll find the source code itself is pretty small. It's like three or four megabytes in size. So it should be an almost an instant download on just about any internet connection. All right, so now that we have that in place, what we want to do is fire up our recently installed IntelliJ. Now, one thing I should have said before we started here, I wouldn't recommend installing Java 
then doing a reboot, and then installing IntelliJ and continuing with the process, just in case. I know Java sets some uh, environment variables, and sometimes those want to reboot before they will work properly. Okay, so now that we've got things running, fire up your IntelliJ. Uh, it should, on your first launch, ask you to you know say yes to this, set some defaults, whatever. But once you're done, you should come to this window. And what you want to do is just go ahead and open. And uh, IntelliJ uses a directory-based project structure, so you just want to go to the place you just downloaded Delver to. Pick Delver, the game engine, like that and then go ahead and open it. So here we are, we are now in IntelliJ. The important thing here is this little pop-up, unlinked Gradle project. Go ahead and say import Gradle project, and you're gonna to wanna to say uh, use auto import, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your JDK is selected. Now what this is going to do is basically on the first run, uh, let's make sure that we're installed, the right version is installed. We'll go ahead and run that, and then, um, this is going to configure the Gradle development environment if it's not already there. So this could take a couple of minutes on your machine. Otherwise, it should just run and configure all of the dependencies of your project. Your project should be good to go. You'll notice over here, there's the projects folder. You can pop that guy out. You can also pin it in place if you so wish. But here you see, this is the folder structure. We've got your editor and then the main game itself. Uh, and then what they've done is pre-configured some run settings for us. So if we come up here to run, you'll see we've got an option of run editor, debug editor. What we want to do is actually go into edit configurations and I'll show you the options you've got here. So you've got editor and game. Now it hasn't done a build yet, so it's saying it can't find this guy. But we want to make sure that these guys are set up and that your JRE is set to the version that you installed. We should be good to go. So don't worry about this warning as of yet because the first time we run it, um, that should go away. So now I'm going to go ahead and say run and we'll run the editor. And this will go ahead and build the editor version for us. Give this a few seconds. Dun, dun, dun. Now, if this fails and it probably will, it's going to probably be all about Java settings. And I'll come back and show you how to go ahead and try to resolve those. Uh, try. Now here, this is the editor. Uh, you can see it's a very simple environment for editing and creating levels. Um, I'm using the middle mouse button to scroll around. You can use the WASD keys to move and then uh, the Q and the E key to go vertically and then right mouse button to look, left mouse button to place in the world and to resize, to hold it down and drag. And then you've come in here and go to open and go to test mods, uh, outside levels. You'll see you have a couple of levels that you can go ahead and play and test with. So we're gonna head and load one of those up and there you can see a sample level from uh, the Delve Edit environment. So that's how you can get the editor up and going. The game is pretty much the same process. All you do is you switch out your configuration. So you'd go in here, uh, give this guy a sec. So we can actually switch it, this guy right here. We can switch to game and we can go ahead and run. Now I think that one actually requires the assets to be installed. I don't have them, so that's gonna probably cause an error. So I'm not gonna go ahead and show you that. But before I finish here, I am going to show you that debugging process. What you're gonna probably run into is problems with it not finding your JDK version or your Java version in some way, shape, or form. If that's the case, come up to your project right here and either press F4 or right click and go down and select da, 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 modules. Where did you go? And there you go, open module settings or F4. And then it'll bring this guy up and just make sure under your platform settings, your SDK is set up right. If it isn't, click the plus and add a new one like so. And you basically just pick JDK, pick where you installed it, and then you're off to the races. Now, what you may have to do after configuring this properly is just delete your project, reopen it, let Gradle run all over again. But nine times out of 10, if you have a problem with IntelliJ and Java, it's because the JDK wasn't in inherited correctly or it's picking up the wrong one from somewhere. So nine times out of 10, that is where you fix your problems. Now, if you're interested, the source code is actually all down here. So the editor source code is here under dev edit, you go into source and then it's Java basically dictates the file path based off of its namespace in reverse. So we go from com.interrupt. So you got here Dungeoneer, editor, and then you can get into the various different pieces that go together to make up the editor. And here is the bulk of the editor itself. Um, and I'm not going to get into the source code itself, but what you, you can see we have two major projects, the dev editor and then the um, engine itself over here. And again, you can drag into the source code 
by drilling down accordingly. And you'll notice bad logic utilities are being used. Bad logic, coincidentally, is the namespace used for libgdx projects. So they're using something from uh, the libgdx project for this. I don't really care what, but uh, if you drag down in here, you will find, again, the source code down here. And then here are the various different pieces and such that go together to make up the game. So under the RPG namespace, you got classes, skills, stats, and so on. So if you're interested in jumping into the source code, the source code is fully there. Now, if you're interested in just looking Looking at the source code, the nice thing is you don't have to go through any of this build process. You could just download this and look at it in your uh, code editor of choice, or of course you could just uh, browse the source code over here on GitHub. And you see, we've got an exact mirror. So if you want to see how the editor source code works, you can just literally come in here, go into that folder, and there is your editor source code, and you can just read it online. So you don't have to run the project if you just want to take a look behind the scenes and see exactly what they've done. So anyways, that is a very cool move by Delver Game folks. Uh, I hope uh, people will check out this game because this was a very generous move. And I'd like to see more and more developers release their source code so other people can see you know, what the secret sauce is behind their game. So that is it for now. Hopefully you guys found that useful. Let me know down below if you've got an opinion of Delver the game. If you heard of this, are you excited to see the source code? And what do you think of Java for game development? Now, obviously, Java was used behind Minecraft. It is somewhat tested, but it isn't used that that often. There's not a lot of Java-based games out there. So it's cool to see another Java open source project available. Uh, are you going to be digging into this or does that whole Java thing just turn you right off? All the same, let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.